Hello everyone, this is 100DD33, and today we're going to be doing some gun hunting. Now, ever since I was 11, every year we would go gun hunting for the week of Thanksgiving, and that is happening right now. So every weekend when we knew deer hunting was coming, we would actually take off the following week for deer season. And during that time, what we would do is we would do deer drives. But the first thing that we would do is every single morning, and especially opening weekend, is we would all pick out a spot because my dad's a farmer, so we have a bunch of cornfields and uh, pick bean fields to hunt. So there's always a little woods along these fields where there's a really good chance that a buck would come out. So that's what we would do. We would all pick a spot and head over to the stand. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to head over to the stand. The spot we have picked out here is we're going to head over to this uh, tower stand over here. So we'll head over here. And we'll try it out for a little bit. And if we don't see anything, we'll pretty much hop down and see what else we can find along the way. But usually, whenever I would have any luck when I'm gun hunting, um, I would always see the buck either before or after I was in the stand. I would never ever see a buck or a potential shooter buck while I was in the stand. I would either jump them up mostly on the way to the stand. So if anyone ever hunted or lives in a cold state, then they know that it's really difficult to sit in your tree stand for a long period of time. And that's one of the main reasons why we'd start doing drives, because when you get in your stand and it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and by the time 8 o'clock comes, you feel like you've been sitting there for at least 7 or 8 hours, when really it's only been like 2 hours. So if you can actually make it to 10 o'clock, it seems like it's a miracle, because no matter how much clothes you bring, how many hand warmers, feet warmers, whatever you want, you're still going to get cold. Sometimes it's not that cold, but I would say three quarters of the time, it's going to be cold and really cold. So that's where the drives come in really good. And what happens is by 10 o'clock, we all pretty much start messaging each other. And we get a hold of each other and we all decide on what field we're going to drive next. And so then we all meet up at that field and we have a bunch of people set up. We have a couple of people who are going to be the drivers. We always have the standers go first. So we always like drive around the backside, drop off the people who are going to stand, or also known as the shooters. And then the drivers come around the other side and push everything to the, the uh, sitters. All right, so now that we're in the stand, this is when the fun part starts. So pretty much you just sit here and hope that you either hear something coming in or somebody starts shooting or something happens to wake you up and get you out of this trance of being completely bored. I mean, you can enjoy the birds singing for a little while, but eventually it just you just start getting really bored and really cold and hungry and you just wish you were sleeping still in bed and you're wondering why you're not laying there still. Instead, you're out here freezing in this miserable cold hoping that you might catch a glimpse of a buck. All right, so we've been sitting here for about an hour now, and we have four does here, which is a lot better than nothing, which that happens quite often as well. So normally about this time, all the neighbors will start shooting their guns, and you'll start to think to yourself, so everybody else has seen a buck except for me. And just like that, we got a buck coming in. Now he's not a very big one, but he's definitely a buck. And if I saw a buck like this, there's no way I would shoot it, but I would be so happy to see a buck because it's such a cool looking buck and I know he's going to get bigger. The next year he's going to be bigger and he'll get bigger and bigger. So it's just so cool to be able to watch a buck like this and think about how much potential he has to actually score pretty decent as he gets older. And this is kind of one of the reasons why I stopped gun hunting, to be honest. It pretty much made me sick to my stomach. When I would watch a buck like this, go over to the neighbors, and not that it's his first buck, because I know the neighbors have shot plenty of bucks in their lifetime. So they don't need to just shoot every single buck that they see. But they do. And so I would see a buck, I mean, normally a little bit bigger, more like a probably 14 inside, 8 point with maybe 4 6 inch tines on them. And he'll walk over to the neighbors, which would be right over behind this thing here right over behind this uh, telephone wire. And as soon as he would get over there, I would hear a gunshot. 
and I knew that I wouldn't see that buck ever again. So that would happen so consistently that it would almost happen every single year. No matter what spot I was in, I mean, everybody always has neighbors. Unless you own, like, hundreds of thousands of acres all connected together, which nobody really has enough um, assets to be able to afford that. So you have to have neighbors. And if you don't have really good neighbors that understand QDMA, then you're not going to get big bucks very often. And you won't be able to see nice little bucks like this be able to grow into trophy potential whitetails. All right, so even though this is the only buck that we actually saw, we're going to let him go as hard as it is because you know that you really want to pull the trigger and you have a perfect opportunity right now to be able to do that. But at the end of the day, are you really going to appreciate that deer or are you going to pull the trigger and not really care and just take those rack? Well, I guess you could call it a rack. I guess you could use it as a coat rack or something like that. But, I mean, that's the thing. You're If you had a purpose for it, then great. But if you're just going to cut the horns off of it and throw them um, on a pile next to your other smaller bucks, then it's not really like you're going to appreciate it that much. So what I would do is I would just let him go and keep hunting, and hopefully I could find a bigger one. And so now we've been sitting here for another hour and haven't really seen anything. Well, there is a feral hog that just walked by over here, but it's a female. So I'm not too worried about her. So right about now is probably when we're going to get down and start the search for hopefully finding a buck. A decent one at least. Alright guys, well it's a good thing we didn't take that shot because we just got a call from a whitetail buck right up here. Still haven't got a look at him yet, but there's a good chance he might be a nice one. It's kind of far away, I can't even see him hardly. I think we just found the same buck from before. But no, this is actually a different buck. This one looks a little bit bigger than the last one. Not much, but he's a little bit bigger. And I think it's so cool to be able to see him and to be able to think that he's going to get bigger as long as he sticks around and nobody goes blasting him away. So there he goes. A nice young buck. Alright guys, well we got a coyote out here. So it's really cool if you can see a coyote or a fox because you can hunt them on your own land um, pretty much all season long. So here we have our coyote and let's pick him up. It's actually a female. We hit her in the back of the neck at 65 meters. And sometimes this is really all you get. So I would be very happy to be able to get this during um, gun season. A lot of times you don't get the big bucks and they're hard to come by because they're so smart so I would be very happy to get a coyote like this in real life and I've actually never got one during gun season I've shot at them and I've seen them but I've never actually had a chance to um, get a coyote also I'd much rather take a coyote versus a young buck that has a potential to become a nice buck in a few years so I'm very happy. Plus, I mean, I understand what it's like to be able to sit in the stand for so long. You really just want to pull the trigger eventually. And so I'm sure it is very tempting to want to be able to get those young bucks. But it's a lot better to find something else to shoot. All right, guys. We just found the buck that we were looking for. He's right up there. And what a hunt it was. We haven't seen hardly anything. Pass up a bunch of little bucks. And we got this monster buck here. He looks 170 plus. And you can see how smart he is. He's way out ahead. Um, we don't really have a very good angle at him. We might actually be able to take a crack at him here in a second. So let's see if we can't get a good hit on him. Maybe not. He's in the brush. I think that might be him right there. But we're going to give a little call and see if we can't get him turned around. Because at this moment here, you want to hope that nobody else around you shoots and possibly spooks one of the biggest bucks you've ever seen. So you want to be really, really careful at this moment. So you also want to say, if you see a big buck by you, you want to get on your phone and text 
whoever's in the area near you to make sure that they don't shoot, especially at like a little doe. I mean, if they shoot a big buck, that's one thing, but you don't want them just going blasting away and scaring away the monster buck that's coming right to you. So there is still a little bit of the rut going on. So he does have potential to come into the call. At least enough to where we can actually get a decent shot on him. But we gotta be careful. We're wearing blaze orange so he could see us a mile away. And he's a big old smart buck. So we gotta be careful. And we have a doe coming right to us here and that's not a good thing. We need to get past her, that way if she spooks she goes the other way. And not the same direction as the buck. So he was a little bit spooked. I'm hoping he stopped a little bit and kind of changed direction. But we don't really have a very good position here. Because we're not going to be able to see him until he comes up over this hill. And we got does all around us, we got coyotes all around us. We're just not in a very good position. So we gotta take it slow and see what happens. So a lot of times when you see a buck like that, you almost want to instantly take a shot right for the back of the neck, but it's a little bit risky. It's one thing, basically you have a 50% chance you're gonna get a huge buck or you're gonna wound him. Someone else is gonna get him. All right guys, so we just popped up and I almost just spooked this giant buck. You can see his rack coming in right there coming in right behind this tree. I didn't see him for a while and I thought I heard something coming in from the backside and I was right. There he is right there. He's sneaking in from the backside. Look how smart this monster buck is. The worst part is we don't even have a shot right now because he's in some brush. We're trying to calm him a little bit but we really can't do much. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try the can. See how that works. Just a little tiny call just to get him coaxed out a little bit. Oh, that is a huge buck. That is a huge buck. We got him. How far is he? He just called right there. We got him 64 meters out and we could definitely take him with the shotgun. Even though he's in a little bit of brush, we're gonna try for a shot. He's down. We got him. That was a monster buck. What a monster. It was a little ways out there too. That was a little bit of a poke, but look at the size of him though. He's an 8x8, eight eight, just an absolute monster buck. I think we hit him in the neck, and it should have actually hit some kind of vitals on the inside there. But he's a giant. That is what we're looking for. And this is the reason why you pass up those young bucks. Because eventually, they're going to turn out just like this. And how much more special is the moment to be able to take something like this? versus a six or eight point buck. What a buck. Let's pick him up and see what he scores. So we got shoulder blade and neck bone three. So really good shot. He scores 175.3. What a monster whitetail. And to be able to take him with the 12 gauge slug at 60 meters is pretty awesome. A really cool trophy shot. What a monster buck. That was so cool because basically what happened is we looped around the whole south end here and we saw a bunch of young bucks. Ended up passing all them up. And then off in the distance we spotted this guy and I knew he was huge. I didn't know he was this big. I thought he was like a 160s or 170s but he's almost a 180 buck. And we got lucky enough that he actually came in the backside and I heard him coming even though there was a bunch of does coming so I thought it might possibly be him I popped up and it was definitely him and he came in and we took a nice 60 meter shot and got this monster buck 
Unfortunately, this doesn't really happen in real life very often. It has never happened to me. Normally, this doesn't happen, and right about now is when we'll start doing some deer drives. But once in a while, when you get lucky, it does happen. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to be the end of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Also, good luck to anybody that's out there gun hunting on their own right now, whether it's rifle, shotgun, or I think it might even be muzzleloader season in some places too. So good luck, and thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you guys get a big buck, and we'll see you next time.